Shift happens. It's not only the law of story, but the entire universe. I mean, we've all heard it said, change is the only constant. That's because everything in existence is in a state of flux. There are no solids, not in nature and not in you. Now, I know we tell kindergartners that there are solids, but we also tell them that magnets have poles and that a wave is a thing and not what a thing does. You see, just because something is correct grammatically doesn't mean it exists in reality. You are not a noun. You're a verb. And just like you, the hero of every story is in a state of becoming. But it's not just any becoming. It follows a cycle. And that cycle is imprinted in your DNA. That's why you instinctively know when a story breaks that cycle. And why? Because this cycle is in everything. It crosses all beliefs and cultures, be they esoteric or exoteric. Time itself and the seasons are bound by this cycle. It's found in products, plants, and every living, breathing thing on the planet. Even water is bound by its laws. The ancient world understood this cycle and they studied it. Today, the closest thing we have is the hero's journey. But where does the hero's journey come from? Well, it comes from here, the cosmos. And that cycle is the solar cycle. It all begins with the summer solstice. This is the longest and brightest day of the year, when the kingdom of light and righteousness is at its strongest, and the kingdom of darkness, of cold and death, at its weakest. It's a time of wealth, health, and happiness. Now, throughout history, it's been given several different names, but they all pretty much mean the same thing. For now, we'll call it paradise. Now, paradise's flaw, if it indeed has a flaw, is that it doesn't last. This is known as the fall. <laughs> I mean, we named a season after it, right? Now in story, it is known as the wound the hero receives. And in real life, it's known as trauma. Now, trauma can be big, something like the fall of a temple or the towers, but it's usually something very simple, like a broken promise or a failed expectation. In some circles, this is known as the birth of the ego, and in others, the birth of the shadow. Regardless of the form it takes, the result is always the same. The fall of the kingdom of paradise and the creation of the ordinary world. Everything you will ever experience in life, both real and imagined, is because of these three things. This is the cycle. In fact, this is the reason all theology, psychology, counseling, philosophy, metaphysics, the arts, and all the sciences even exist. They're just humans trying to achieve paradise. You see, they're all the same thing. And all the arguments and debates that take place between them are always birthed out of ignorance. But that's a lesson for another time. Every story ever told has to begin in one of these three places. But the vast majority start here, in the ordinary world. Now, the ordinary world is a pretty tricky place. By definition, it's a kingdom of slavery and immorality. But those that run it aren't necessarily evil. Oftentimes, they're survivors of the fall, and they remember the pain it caused. And to keep that pain from getting any worse, they create hierarchy and laws and then program the citizens of the ordinary world to think that those laws are natural and even moral. In fact, every story has a character called the lawgiver who explains those laws and then the consequences for disobeying them. You have a problem with authority, Mr. Anderson. The people that dwell in the ordinary world are taught to believe it's okay to give up freedom for safety. They are taught that life is about quantity, instead of quality. In other words, they're programmed to obey. Now, the problem with this is that obedience is doing what you're told despite what's right, while morality 
is doing what's right despite what you're told. But those in the ordinary world are conditioned to forget this. Now, there are many ways to know if you've started your cycle in the hero's journey or if you're stuck in the ordinary world. But the main one is the belief in experts. You see, experts are a concept. They do not exist in real life. Expert is a word of disempowerment and invented solely to keep the hero dependent and in a childlike state. This is why mentally every hero begins as an orphan. It's also why in most superhero movies, the main character is literally an orphan. That's the journey. It's a movement from immaturity to maturity. A journey from dependence to freedom. The hero learns that all the facts that they were programmed to believe aren't just wrong, but laughably wrong. Magnets don't have poles. If they did, you could break one in half and give someone the north half and someone else the southern half. But you can't. This is one of the reasons Carl Jung said certainty is the sign of an uncultivated mind. You must unlearn what you have learned. But the journey from dependence on facts and experts and into uncharted territory is scary. And the hero finds himself in a world of darkness, which leads us back to the sun. So the hero follows the sun as it continues its journey to its lowest point, which we call the winter solstice. This is the darkest and shortest day of the year. This too is gone by many names, but they all represent the same thing. The darkness and isolation of the subconscious. This is where the sun dies, and it doesn't rise another degree in the sky for three days. It is during this time where darkness reigns supreme, and the warmth of summer is just a memory. It's during this time when Luke enters the cave, when Christ enters the tomb, and Pinocchio the whale. But it's always darkest before the dawn, and thankfully, at Christmas, the sun is reborn and begins its ascent back to glory. It's barely noticeable at first, but slowly the days change and grow brighter. So too does the hero change. In fact, every camera and location change in a story is just an outer manifestation of the inward change in the hero. Now some stories show this change through clothing or a name change. Regardless of the form it takes, it always means the same thing. The promised son has returned. The traumatized orphan in the ordinary world, he's gone, replaced by a king. Spring gives way to Easter and the celebration of new life. This is when the hero discovers that they aren't the effect, but the cause. That they aren't defined by their past or trauma or their wound. That they are not a victim. And they never were. This is when the hero discovers that facing their shadow is oftentimes the very thing that can save the world. This is true in story because it's true in us. Truth can't be taught, only discovered. Shift happens whether you like it or not. And the entire world is waiting for you to start your journey. There's only one story. There's only one person in that story. And that person is you.